Hoping to slice their way through poverty, many residents in this rural town turn to an illegal million dollar industry, harvesting their own body parts. I did it for my children. We really had very little. I regret it now, but it's too late. Arnold's health has suffered ever since he sold one of his kidneys on the black market. Barely able to work now, he's turned to weaving to support his five children. The 2,000 U.S. dollars he made on his kidney, long gone. It's in places like this that organ trading thrived, underdeveloped and impoverished. In this one area alone, over 100 residents sold their kidneys for money. Well, there are always uh, three factors that work in combination. One is to have a large pool of uh, poor people who are so desperate that they would consider se selling a part of their body. The second one would be the, pas the presence of unethical doctors who would be in hospitals who were willing to do this. And of course, the third important factor is the lax uh, implementation of the law. And that's been the situation we've had in the Philippines. For Jerry Serdon, a kidney vendor turned broker, the lax implementation of the law kept his business going. After selling his own kidney, he continued to make money introducing other potential vendors to doctors. I was helping them, the recipient patient, mostly Arabs, and those in need of money, who I gave this opportunity to. Most of the sold kidneys went to foreigners, prompting the government in 2008 to ban transplants other than on Filipinos. The dollars being brought in were seen to encourage unethical practices. With talk going around that the ban could soon be lifted, the government is once again assuring it will streamline the process and protect the donors. But vendors here say that won't make much of a difference. Their scars proof of lessons learned, that there is no fast track out of poverty on short-term gains with long-term costs. Margot Ortigas, Lopez Quezon, The Philippines.